I think we've mentioned it a little bit, but I'd like to linger on this question that uh, uh, folk, folks like Eliezer Yudkowsky has to worry about uh, and others of the existential, of the serious threats of AI that have been reinvigorated now with the rapid developments of AI systems. Uh, do you worry about the existential risks of AI as Eliezer does, about the alignment problem, about this getting out of hand? Anytime where there's a number of serious people who are raising a concern that is that existential about something that you're involved with, I think you have to think about it, right? So I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about it from that perspective. Um, the thing that that I where, where I basically have come out on this for now is I I do think that there are over time I think that we need to think about this even more as we as we approach something that you know could be closer to super intelligence. I just think it's pretty clear to anyone working on these projects today that we are that we're not there. Um, and one of my concerns is that. We 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 spent a fair amount of time on this before, but there are more. Um, uh, I don't know if mundane is the right word, but there's like concerns that already exist, mm -hmm. right? About like people using AI tools to do harmful things of the type that we're already aware. Whether you know we talked about fraud or scams or, or different things like that, um, and that's going to be a pretty big set of challenges that the company is working on this are going to need to grapple with regardless of whether there is an existential concern as well at some point down the road so i i do worry that to some degree you can people can get a little too focused on on some of the tail risk and then not do as good of a job as we need to on the things that you are can be almost certain are going to come down the pipe as um as as real risks that 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 kind of manifest themselves in the near term. So for me, I've I've spent most of my time on that once I I kind of made the realization that the size of models that we're talking about now in terms of what we're building are are just quite far from the super intelligence type concerns that um that that people raise. But but I think once we get a couple steps closer to that, um I know as we do get closer, I think that those, you know, there are going to be some novel um, risks and issues about how we make sure that the systems are safe, for sure. I guess here, just to take the conversation in a somewhat different direction, I think in some of these debates around safety, I think the concepts of intelligence and autonomy, or like the 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 being of the thing, um, you know, as an analogy. They get kind of conflated together. Mm -hmm. And I think it very well could be the case that you can make something and scale intelligence quite far, but that that may not manifest the safety concerns that people are saying in the sense that, I mean, just if you if you look at human biology, it's like, all right, we have our neocortexes where all the the thinking happens, right? And and it's but but it, it's not really calling the shots at the end of the day. We have a much more you know, primitive old brain structure for which our neocortex, which is this powerful machinery, is basically just a kind of prediction and reasoning engine mm -hmm. to help it kind of like our, our very simple brain um, decide how to plan and, and do what it needs to do in order to achieve these like very kind of basic impulses. And I think that you can think about some of the development of intelligence along the same lines where just like our neocortex doesn't have free will or autonomy um we might develop these wildly intelligent systems that are you know, much more intelligent than our neocortex have much more capacity but are you know in the same way that our neocortex is sort of subservient and mm -hmm. is used as a tool by our our kind of simple impulse brain it's um you know i think that it's not out of the question that very intelligent systems that that have the capacity to think will will kind of act as that is sort of an extension of 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 the neocortex doing that. So I think my, my own view is that where we really need to be careful is on the development of autonomy mm -hmm. and how we think about that. Because um it's actually the case that 
relatively simple and unintelligent things that have runaway autonomy and just spread themselves or you know it's like we have a word for that it's a virus right it's i mean like it's can be simple computer code that is not particularly intelligent but just spreads itself and does a lot of harm um you know biologically or computer and um i just think that these are somewhat separable things and a lot of what I think we need to develop when people talk about safety and responsibility is really the governance on the autonomy that can be given to, to systems. And to me, if you know, if I were, you know, a policymaker is, or thinking about this, I would really want to think about that distinction between these, where I think building intelligent systems will be can create a huge advance in terms of people's quality of life and productivity growth in the economy. But it's the the autonomy part of this that I think we really need to make progress on how to govern these things responsibly before we build the capacity for them to make a lot of decisions on their own or or give them goals or things like that. And I think that's a research problem, but I do think that to some degree these are are somewhat are somewhat separable things. I love the distinction between intelligence and autonomy and and the metaphor with the neocortex. Let me ask about power. So uh, building super intelligent systems, even if it's not in the near term, I think Meta as, is one of the few companies, if not the main company that will develop the super intelligent system. And you are a man who's at the head of this company. Building AGI might make you the most powerful man in the world. Do you worry that that power will corrupt you? What a question. Um, I mean, look, I, I think realistically, this gets back to the open source things that we talked about before, which is, I don't think that the world will be best served by any small number of organizations having this without it being something that is more broadly available. And I think if you look through history, it's when there are these sort of like unipolar advances and things that and like power imbalances that they're 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 doing to being kind of weird situations. So this is one of the reasons why I think open source is 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 generally the right approach. And you know, I think it's a it's a categorically different question today when we're not close to super intelligence. I think that there's a good chance that even once we get closer to super intelligence, open sourcing remains the right approach, even though I think at that point it's a somewhat different debate. Um, but I think part of that is that that is, you know, I think one of the best ways to ensure that the system is as secure and safe as possible, because it's not just about a lot of people having access to it. It's the scrutiny that 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 kind of comes with being, uh, with building an open source system. I think that this is a pretty widely accepted thing about open source is that um, you, know, you have the code out there, so anyone can see the vulnerabilities. Um, anyone can can kind of mess with it in different ways. People can spin off their own projects and, and experiment in a ton of different ways. And the net result of all of that is that the systems just get hardened and get to be a lot safer and more secure. Um, so I think that there's a chance that that ends up being the way that this goes too, a pretty good chance, and that having this be open both leads to a healthier development of the technology and also leads to a more balanced um, distribution of the technology in, in a way that that strike me as good values to aspire to. So to you, the risks, there's risks to open sourcing, but the benefits outweigh the risks. At, at the two, it's interesting, I think the way you put it, uh, you put it well, that there's a different discussion now than when we get closer to the, uh, to development of super intelligence of of the benefits and risks of uh, open sourcing. Yeah, but, and, to, and to be clear, I, I feel quite confident in the assessment that open sourcing models now is net positive. I think there's a good argument that in the future it will be too, even as you get closer to super intelligence. But I've not, I'm, I've certainly have not decided on that yet. And I think that it becomes a somewhat more complex set of questions that I think people will have time to debate and will also be informed by what happens between now and then and to make those decisions. We don't have to necessarily just debate that in theory right now. 